should the United States keep the Electoral College? Most Americans say no. According to Pew Research Center, 65% of U.S. adults want to change the current system so that the candidate who wins the most votes wins the White House. 33% want to keep the current system. Could a move to the popular vote determining the winner bring unintended consequences? Michael Morley is a professor at Florida State University's College of Law. It's so nice to have you in studio. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Can we begin with the system we have right now? How did we get what we have and how does it work? The framers considered a variety of different possible ways of choosing the president. They considered the possibility of having a national popular vote. Ultimately, they settled on an electoral college where each state would receive a number of presidential electors and those electors would cast electoral votes to determine the president. And the main reason for that was in an era before the internet, before right, airplanes, transportation, one of the framers' main concerns was that people in a particular state might be well acquainted with the leaders of their own state, but might not necessarily know enough people in other states to be able to make an intelligent choice among candidates. So as you well know, there's been this move to say, hey, why are we doing electoral votes? Why don't people just actually vote, meaning let's have a popular vote, partly because we've had people win the popular vote and then, of course, they lose in the electoral college. So what would have to happen first in order to change the system? Formally, it would take a constitutional amendment, which would have to be approved by two thirds of each chamber of Congress and then three quarters of state legislatures or state ratifying conventions. So you would basically need to have broad, widespread, probably bipartisan support. There's also been a movement called the National Popular Vote Compact, which seeks to work within the confines of the current electoral college. And this is an interstate agreement. It takes effect when states that have a total of 200 70 electoral votes, meaning enough votes to determine the outcome of a presidential election, have signed on to it. And under this interstate agreement, all of the members agree to appoint electors based on the outcome of the national popular vote. California, for example, has signed on. Were the compact to go into effect, even though the Democratic candidate for president in some future election were to win the state of California, California could nevertheless wind up having to appoint Republican electors if the Republican candidate wins the national popular vote or you know, vice versa. So as of right now, not enough states have entered into the compact for it to take legal effect. The argument is that this is a way of effectively having a national popular vote without having to actually go through the amendment process to abolish the Electoral College. Do you think moving to a popular vote would be a good idea? I mean, there are definitely arguments to be made on both sides. I think one of the advantages of the Electoral College is that if there's a crisis, if there's a dispute, if there's litigation in a particular state, it is confined to that state, right? And as we saw even in the 2020 election, right? Even the disputes over you know, finding additional votes were limited to particular jurisdictions. But does cabining it to a particular jurisdiction allow politics and political pressure to weigh very heavily. It's certainly possible. The issue is, though, if you're limited to a particular jurisdiction or particular states, the amount of litigation is very limited. You minimize the possibility for having splits between state Supreme Courts. By limiting the geographic scope of the disputes, I think you're limiting the extent to which politics could be involved, simply because whatever candidate is coming from behind can't go to friendly jurisdictions of their own and try to play politics there. Michael Morley is professor at FSU. It's so nice to have you. Thanks again. Thanks for having me.